It's six away from seven. Thanks for being with us on AM this morning. Air New Zealand has taken a step closer to decarbonising some of its fleet. The airlines announced it's bought its first battery-powered electric aircraft, the Alia, from US-based company Beta Technology. Air New Zealand Chief Executive Greg Foran and Beta Technologies Chief Executive Kyle Clark join us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, did I say that correctly? Is that how you say them? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Yeah. Aaliyah. Um, you are the Aaliyah expert, I understand. So tell us, how many of them are, are actually in production right now, and are they expensive to build? Um, so we have several pre-production pr prototypes that we're flying all over the United States, and uh, we have a first production run that just started about two weeks ago with the commissioning of our net zero production facility. And uh, the first production run has 14 aircraft. The next one has 58 aircraft. And um, this first production run is wherein lies the first aircraft for Air New Zealand. Tell us how the battery works. So the battery is about five times the size of a Tesla battery. So it's about 330 kilowatt hours. And it's running at about twice the voltage of a car battery. So you get more efficiency on the distribution. And that battery gets charged up to near 100% and then discharge down to about 40% of the battery during the flight because in aviation you always keep a sufficient reserve mm. to have to deal with weather or um, issues with an airport. And, uh, and that yields something that has an operational range of about, about 150 nautical miles, um, but it'll actually fly for about 300. But you keep that, that range in the bank for safety. Totally. What's it like to fly one of these? I understand you do fly them. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I've been flying these things for, for about five years um, in different forms. And I've flown all kinds of helicopters and planes and gliders. But this plane specifically is like magical to fly. It has these huge windows in front of you. It's electric, so it's nearly silent. The motor's silent. The prop makes a little bit of noise. But it's 20 feet behind you. And so you hear the wind over the fuselage. And you hear the wind over the wing with every turn. And it's like a very enjoyable, beautiful thing to fly as compared to be being in a fuselage that you can't see out the front and it's kind of loud and it's, it's, you know, got some different pressurizations and dryness. It's just a beautiful airplane to fly. Cool. Greg, this is obviously going to be used um, initially for, for cargo. How soon do you think passengers could jump on one of these? Well, once we, you know, work through some of the logistics and you know, all the things that we're going to learn when we get this up and running. So, you know, the plan is to have this in and up and running in 2026 with cargo. And, you know, once we do enough cycles between A and B to satisfy ourselves that we've worked everything out, then we've got the opportunity to put some passengers on. But you can see why we're so excited yeah. about it, you know, to be working with Kyle and his team out of Vermont in, in the US is just fantastic for us. And um, I guess the sustainability of, of them is quite exciting too, and that's, I know, where you're wanting to, to look to go as an airline. Is, it, is that expensive? Because there will be people watching who will also be thinking, are we putting a lot of money into this? Are cheaper flights for us being pushed further into the horizon? <laughs> well, I always think that you've got to be able to do a couple of things at the same time here, Melissa. And, and what this is about is getting ourselves positioned for the future. And, you know, I, I would imagine that the ingredients are all here that as this begins to scale, and Kyle can talk some more about that, what we will see is something that is incredibly competitive, but also great for the environment. Part of getting in early is to get on the experience curve, learn as quickly as we can. But yeah. I think all the ingredients are there, aren't yeah. they? I, I'm, I'm a little more bullish than Greg. The, having flown these things in comparative tests with UPS and others, um, the cost is substantially less. It's really a neat thing here. Um, wasted energy in airplanes means fuel costs, it means noise, and it means dollars. All of those things track down together. So if you take the fuel out and you make a more efficient aircraft, it's quieter and it costs less, of course. Mm. And, um, and in, in trials that we've done, it's in the operational cost of the aircraft, um, it's a substantial, more than 50% reduction in the cost of operation. So you know, that, how that translates into, um, into fares and cargo, um, we feel like electric does its part to drive that in the right direction. And, uh, and again, it, it's an interesting thing to think about the cost because what is the cost of not doing something about the environmental climate change? And the world needs a leader. 
And Air New Zealand specifically has stepped up and said, we're going to take a leadership position here. We're going to, we're going to step in and operationalize this. And guess what? Everybody's going to start following. Yeah. And then that's going to drive the cost further down. Yeah, that's true. Um, just very, very quickly, um, I'm, I'm running over time here. But Greg, uh, just to comment on what we've seen recently, pictures at Auckland Airport in particular, where they it seems like there's been long queues. Um, has that had any impact on the airline? Is that something that Air New Zealand is involved in talking about behind the scenes? Yeah, look, we, we are very conscious of being part of that ecosystem and as you've identified, there's lots of partners that we have to work with. I don't think it's great for anyone when it doesn't work like a Swiss watch and that's the way we reference it in our business. But, you know, everyone is talking, everyone's working very hard. I think what we saw last weekend was some mechanical issues. Unfortunately, these things can occur, but the team are working hard to, to get it going. And, and I do know from my own experience, you know, travelling in and out quite often, it has certainly come a long way from where it was a few months ago. So thank you to everyone and uh, we'll make sure all our customers have a great vacation. Good, very, very good. Thank you both for, very, uh, for coming in and telling us about the um, exciting new planes coming up. Air New Zealand Chief Executive Greg Foran and Beta Technologies Chief Executive Kyle Clark.